previously on 58 Keys. Um, I've recommended mind mapping, which means I've recommended mind note, and I've separately recommended outlining as a way, well, not necessarily of writing your books, but of capturing and organising any ideas, which means I've recommended Omni Outliner a lot. Now, MindNode has been updated, and alongside the very excellent mind mapping, it has added its own outliner. So, you no longer need two apps. But of course, the question is, will you still want two apps? Hello, I'm William Gallagher. This is 58 Keys, and 58 Keys is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do subscribe if that's you, because we have so much to talk about. Now, this time, you and I, I know we're different writers, but we use the same gear to write on. We have at least a lot of the same issues in getting, you know, from ideas in our heads to words on the screen. Mind Node already helped with that with mind mapping. With Mind Node on Macs or iOS, you would just dump every thought you had, every idea, put it out on the screen in front of you, look at the horrible mess, and then start straightening it out. You'd start making sense of it. You'd start making connections. You'd spot what you were missing, what you, what you hadn't thought of yet. All of that can be done in an outliner too. Even though I am simultaneously a huge fan of Omni Outliner that does this, I'm also an unfan, I don't know, of outlining my writing. I tend to like mind maps for these big projects where I've got to get it all out of my head and in front of my face, and then I like an outliner for planning out the detail, particularly in events and things. The new mind node for Mac helps, uh, promises to help writers with both. Notice I said for Mac. Uh, this update is coming to the iPad and iPhone, but there's no date for it yet. So for now, let me show you the new Mac version of mind node. So, here is an outline in the new mind node for Mac. Uh, this is an outline, which means it has headings and it has subheadings. You can keep writing away in it, adding more of these headings, and you keep uh, indenting to make more levels of headings and text, which means you can also then collapse all of this into just one main heading, if you like, uh, or several main headings, move main headings around, move the text around inside them. You can also, this is really nice, you can focus on the bit you're thinking about now. So you can uh, concentrate on the small picture, open back up to the big one, you can skip around it all as you need. Uh, there are things that you can't do, which I'll explain in a moment, and there are limits on certain things that you can do, but overall, no spoilers, this is a solid basic outliner that lets you organise your thoughts before you even think about creating a mind map. Or it does when you use it this way. This is the full outlining view and it is not what you see when you first open MindNode. Instead, and you, more usually, you see this. That's the outline in a bar to the left and the mind map taking up most of the screen on the right. You don't think that you've been doing a mind map yet, but you have. All the time you've been bashing away any, any text into the outline, MindNode has been building up the map alongside. And if you look at it in this view, you can actually see it doing that as you go. It's actually really reminiscent of the old, um, I think it was called Quick Entry in previous versions of MindNode. There you could rapidly jot down some lines of text, bam, and then it would make a mind map out of them. Now, as well as adding more ability to indent and move around sections of your outline to collapse and expand and explore, and just to see it all, uh, it doesn't take that text and squirt it into the map, it lets you go back and forth to it. When you can see both the map and the outline on screen, you can edit both of them. You can write in either. Problems, well, there are more limitations than problems. Um, you saw that you can have a heading, then a subheading, then a sub subheading. Just like any outliner, you can keep adding new layers of text, which means it's great because you can collapse the layers of text and just see this bit, just see all of them, go back to a single line, see part way, see it all, your choice. Initially, it didn't look to me as if my node would let you go more than four levels deep. It does but you can't see that visually, particularly in the narrow column thing, because rather than indenting every layer, after about four or so, it starts indenting them with the same amount. You can still collapse them, but it's hard to see that you have. It's hard to see where they are. Uh, similarly, my note for Max new outlining, it is, and I think it's gonna remain a single column 
I mean, like now, I mean, outline a pro, for example, it's your multiple columns. It's like you're outlining a spreadsheet. That is unquestionably better. But actually, I think of the 800 or more events I've planned in Omni Outliner, I've only used columns, well, no more than a handful of times. More seriously to my mind is how if you select uh, more than one line in MindNodes Outline, you can't indent or outdent them together. You have to do one at a time, or at least to do with the keyboard. Uh, you can select them both and then drag them up under a previous heading, which is OK, but... This is really bugging me at first. I think it's been fixed. It seems to have been fixed. But when I was first using the first few days of using MindNode for Mac, if I dragged up two sections someone knew and then changed my mind and then hit undo, it wasn't putting them back where they came from. It was adding them to the bottom of the outline every time. Now, either that has been fixed or I'm just dragging different things to different places because suddenly it appears to be working. Uh, this isn't, though. Say you're writing a heading and you get carried away, you're writing such a long section of text that you realise, yeah, I'd be better off splitting this into two headings. There is no option to just split the line where the cursor is. And I use that feature so much in Omni Outliner. So there are some questions here, aren't there? Is the outliner in my note for Mac good? Yes. Is it as powerful as, for example, Omni Outliner? No, not even close. I don't think that matters, though, for the giant majority of times that I use outlining, and then I suspect that it doesn't for you either. I don't know. But I think if the if you already see that the single column or the limit on the levels, the visual side, is going to be a problem for you, that's because you already use outlining in my map, so you can tell for yourself. If instead you're starting out with outlining or mind mapping, I think it's unlikely that you're going to find these limits too limiting, not for ages anyway. And it isn't half better than the outliner in Microsoft Word. There's an issue of price. I actually prefer to use one app where I can, and not just because that costs less. I mean, I am not, I'm not casual about buying. I am pretty casual about buying apps, but I prefer to have one because if you have one, you use it more. You would get to know it more. That's the real benefit of one app instead of shuffling about between two. Still, one app is also cheaper than two. So in every sense, MindNode adding detailed outlining is a good thing. I keep saying MindNode, and to be exact, it is MindNode Plus. MindNode Plus is a subscription app which now costs uh, $20 a year or $2.50 per month. Uh, it's also available as part of Setup, the service where you pay $10 a month and you get this plus 200 or more other apps. You can get MindNode and MindNode Plus from the Mac App Store, the iOS App Store, Setup, or just go to MindNode.com to read about every possible combination of the above. The subscription, MindNode Plus, the one subscription gets you both the Mac and iOS versions. And as I say, the company promises that this new outlining feature will come to the iPad and the iPhone. We just don't know when. Uh, for comparison, just to throw lots of prices at you, Omni Outliner that I keep referring to is available as either a subscription or a one-time purchase. So you can buy Omni Outliner Essentials, a, a basic single column version for $20, or the full Omni Outliner 5 for Mac for $100. That one has multiple columns, has the ability to record audio and track line, all sorts of things, and it is available on both Mac and iOS. But if you subscribe to Omni Outliner for $50 a year, you do get Omni Outliner on all devices, whereas currently the Mac and iOS versions of Omni Outliner 5 are separate purchases. That will change, but they are separate now. Uh, I already have them both, and I'm very fond of Omni Outliner, but I'm intending to spend the next few months working as much as I can in Minos Outliner to see what I think. I do already know this, though. MindNode is a first-class mind mapping tool. Its new outlining feature is fine. Not great, but fine. So, MyNode is still predominantly a mind mapping tool. Don't buy MyNode because it has outlining in it. Do buy MyNode because it has mind maps and also outlining. Or just mind maps. You could ignore the outlining. It doesn't force you to use it. I think you will, and it's good, but you're not forced to. I'd have said to you once that I think my maps and outlines, they just suit different types of writers. I think we tend to be visual thinkers or we don't. Uh, I don't tend to use my maps very often, but I use them intensely when I do. So every couple of months and always at the end of the year, I can be found living inside MindNode. I just spend the rest of the time in Omni Outliner. 
Listen, ask me about Mino. Tell me what you think about it too in the comments, would you? Because I think this one, this is one we should explore together more, okay? Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon.